this will do. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I've been wanting to film here for a long time and I finally am in the location and I apologize for the quality and the sound because I'm filming on my GoPro because once again, Mr. DSLR decides that it doesn't want to record. Let me find a different spot real quick. Does anybody else find themselves doing that constantly? <laughs> um, so anyways, I don't know if you could tell from that last clip, but where I was location-wise, I was like underneath the Pennsylvania Turnpike and it was super, super loud, which really wouldn't be a problem with the DSLR and the aimed microphone, but with the GoPro here, it doesn't pick up audio super well, so I figured I'd come to somewhere where it's like a little bit more calm and quiet. Okay, so Silverado, Chevy, that one right there, 2018. I bought it six months ago, six months, six short months. And I have just about 6,000 miles on the truck. So about 1,000 miles a month, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Anyways, six months have gone by now. I've had no problems whatsoever, which is good because a lot of people on forums have had issues with their trucks, but six months for mine, 6,000 miles, no, uh, no issues, so good there. I'm really happy with fuel mileage as well. I think for like a full size V8 semi-lifted truck on a 33 by 1250 tire, I feel like I get pretty good fuel mileage. And if you're curious of the fuel mileage, please stick around on the channel because I'm gonna be doing a full breakdown here soon once I actually hit 6,000 miles because I drove this truck completely stock, 3,000 miles, a good mix of city versus highway, the same exact fuel grade from the same exact place calculated my fuel and now i'm doing the same exact thing with the 33s with the lift and 33s once i hit 6,000 miles i'll add all those numbers up and i'm gonna do a video to you know explain to you guys the fuel mileage and uh how much mpgs i lost with the lift and 33s so stick around for that so 6,000 miles six months 6,000 miles i turned this truck right here into this beast right here. I gotta say, me daily driving it, me doing the work, it doesn't look too crazy to me at all. Um, and it wasn't until I saw this truck right here in this parking lot, where I really noticed the difference of what I did to this thing in six months, because this truck in this parking lot, exact same thing, you know, double cab, standard bed, white, which is awesome, white with the chrome, and it actually has a Z71 package suspension, so I thought it would even sit a little bit bigger, but that just kind of shows you like a real life before and after, which blew my mind. Yeah, so let's get into this video. I wanna go over everything I did to the truck in this six months, explain all the mods to you and what they cost because I get a lot of comments of people saying they you know they want a similar look things like that so I'm going to break it down for you guys show you kind of what I did how much everything costs so like you know you could do it for yourselves also if you're curious every single mod that I'm about to go over right now I'm, I'm just touching on them 
every single mod, there is a video for it on my channel specifically, like for the install, a review on it, things like that. I do it that way on purpose, so that way, if you're looking for like a specific mod, you can go on my channel and find it. I know like a lot of the bigger YouTubers, they'll like make a video, they'll name it something, but then they'll do like three or four modifications in that video, which is awesome. It keeps it exciting because I know my videos can get dry sometimes. But if somebody's looking for a specific modification, they might not be able to find it. So I do it this way. I'm gonna continue doing it this way unless you guys would like to see it differently. I could spice things up a little bit, do more mods in one video. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments below. But until then, every single thing I do to this, no matter how boring it is, there's gonna be a specific video for it. So let's get into the mods done so far. All right, so the first thing I did to this truck was black out my Chevy emblems, the front, in the rear i uh i vinyl wrapped these emblems black i didn't pay for the vinyl because i have a bunch of it but when i did pay for vinyl to black out the emblems it cost me about 10 or 15 dollars that's it um just kind of place the vinyl on there cut it all out and you know there you go it's there it's they're blacked out you can buy blacked out emblems for like 90 or 100 bucks uh, this is like a cheaper alternative way it's what i did right now Okay, next is window tints. I always do window tint on my vehicles. The front windows here, I got 20% to match the rear, the factory rear windows. And then I went with a 5% brow or sunshade, however, whatever you'd like to call it, on the front windshield. I am still contemplating getting the entire windshield done because I think it looks awesome. Although I live in Pennsylvania and I'm terrified of getting the whole windshield done. I see it so often now, I kind of want to do it myself, but maybe this is still my daily driver. Maybe once I have a different daily driver, I'll get the whole windshield done. But either way, this tent cost me 150 bucks. That is from a custom shop that hand cuts everything. None of that bullshit that's, you know, pre-cut. They just slap it on there. It's kind of, you know, your brow looks like a big rainbow. You know, you could see like in on through the edges and stuff like that. None of that. I went to a custom shop. I go to this guy for all my vehicles, 150 bucks, windows tinted perfectly i may add all right next on the list was the leveling kit two and a half inch leveling kit for the front of the truck uh that cost me 80 bucks and i installed it myself i think if you went to get it installed somewhere it might be three four hundred dollars for an installation and then i had to take the truck to get a front end alignment so the alignment cost me a hundred dollars as well it was actually 102 dollars i did the leveling kits it has uh it leveled the truck out completely so the truck sat 100 percent level when I just did the leveling kit. I didn't do upper control arms or anything yet. I will be doing that here in the future. Wheels and tires. Wheels and tires. This was the most expensive thing on the truck so far. I got a wheel and tire package deal from Extreme Customs and Off-Road. A lot of companies do package deals. I actually like custom offsets the best. They have awesome videos on YouTube, good tutorials, good reviews but they couldn't beat Extreme Customs deal on the wheel and tire package. This is a Black Rhino Glamis wheel, 20 by 12 with a negative 44 offset, wrapped in in the Toro Trailblade XT 33 by 1250 tire. They came with TPMS sensors, mounted and balanced, shipped to my house in a couple of days. This cost me right around 1,900 bucks. You could definitely get wheels and tires cheaper. You could definitely pay way more money for them, but that's what I paid for these. And the biggest question I get with these wheels and tires is do they rub? And the, the, the easy answer to that is yes. But do they rub badly? No. Now when I put these on, they rub, this right here rubs right here, slightly. When I first mounted them, I could get one full turn out of the steering wheel and that's it. It was really hard to turn anymore. And actually at some point I ripped that little plastic piece off on the corner I mounted it back up, it's fine. Now there's a couple options to get rid of that rubbing. A, lift the truck higher. B, go with a skinnier wheel, which, you know, with a less offset, which will push the wheel in so you won't have that rubbing. Or C, you can get what they call a Norkel trim or Norkel mod. Norkel trim mod, I don't know. E anyways, what they do, they basically just beat the shit out of your truck and push this in really far, repaint it, so that way you have full turning radius. I don't know, that's not my style on a brand new truck. And plus, these don't rub enough for me to do it because I'll be honest with you, almost 3,000 miles with these tires, they barely don't rub anymore. Driving forward, I, could, I now have turning, my full turning again, it's fine. 
it's just backing up which is sketchy because like these will still grab but going forward after 3,000 miles no turning issues no they still rub slightly but not enough that it's like a big deal it's just kind of like brushes right by so not a big deal and then we have this little guy right here little uh 50 caliber stubby bullet antenna from ronin factory this was 40 dollars really nice quality product american owned veteran supported uh it shipped to my house in like less than a day it was like insane but 40 bucks it upgrades your antenna because these trucks still have the big floppy antennas if you rely on FM radio every single day, I would probably shy away from it. But if you listen to Sirius or if you plug your phone in and listen to it like I do, uh, I don't listen to FM a whole lot, so it doesn't matter. It just it just looks better on your truck than the other one. If uh, if you live in like an area there's where there's a lot of rural woods and trees, you might not get the best reception, but going down a highway when HD radio kicks in for the GM trucks, it's flawless. So uh, it's kind of hit or miss. If you listen to FM radio a lot, I might shy away from it just a bit. And then I have a tonneau cover. I know I, I look insane because there's not a tonneau cover on the truck right now. It was off. We had the quad and stuff loaded in there. We went uh, quad riding this past weekend. Um, but I do have a soft tri full tonneau cover for the truck. I didn't pay full price for it. It was my brother-in-law's. He kind of handed it down to me. But if you want to buy a tri full tonneau cover, soft tonneau cover, they run about $250, $300. Sometimes during Christmas, you can get them cheaper. I got one for my Ram around Christmas time for like 200 bucks. So that was a pretty good deal. And this is actually the only thing I don't have a video on itself yet, the tonneau cover. Um, I plan on doing a video and I wanna go over the controversial topic of whether or not it saves you money, you know, for saving you fuel mileage or not. But yeah, I got the tonneau cover on the truck. Not now, but I do have one. And then lastly, I just did a couple weeks ago a two inch rear block kit from Motofab. This kit was also just 80 bucks. It just came with the rear blocks. I did it separately from the front because I didn't think I wanted a block kit on the truck, but with the truck 100% leveled, it made me irritated because it looked like the truck squatted. And if I put my quad into bed or anything heavy, the truck did squat, I didn't like that. So I just did a two inch block kit in the rear. And uh, yeah, I guess that's really all I did so far. Like when I list it off like that, it doesn't sound like a lot at all. But when you look at this picture, it looks like a big deal. So like you can see that achieving this look is really not that expensive. And uh, I mean, I'm not done with it. I'm not done with it by far at any means. That's just what I've have done so far. I totally forgot. I did two other things. I removed the four wheel drive stickers on the bedside. I removed those. They just peeled right off, super easy a super clean look and I took off the bottom piece of this valence this valence splits into two pieces here's the top piece there's the bottom piece that runs roughly two and three quarter inches uh, tall it comes off so I did that as well and that's free all right now so the truck is not done there's still a lot of mods I want to do a lot of exterior mods but I really want to start getting into like performance I haven't done anything performance wise to the motor or the exhaust like nothing yet um, before we move from exterior, I still want to color match everything. I want to get rid of the chrome. The cheapest quote I got to get everything vinyl wrapped was 1200 bucks. And I think I could probably get it cheaper, maybe if I get it painted, because I could paint it and it will last longer. So I still want to get all that color match. I haven't done it yet, but it is in the works. Also, mirrors. I want to, I still want to run a new gen towing mirror on the truck, and I'd like it to be color matched as well. I haven't done it so far because the base model and the LT trucks, the wiring harness in the door is not wired for lights. They're wired for like, you know, the automatic moving around and heated, they're heated, but they're not wired for like the turn signal lights, daytime running lights, or they're not wired for like reverse lights because the new style towing mirrors, you put your truck in reverse, they'll light up backwards as well. And so buying the mirror, buying the door harness assembly, all this stuff, it ends up being like $500 to get the mirrors done. So like, if you have an LTZ or a high country, uh, your harness is probably fine. You can just buy the mirrors and slap them on. But for me, I haven't been able to justify the money yet, so I don't have the mirrors yet. Also, I want to, I, I'm still contemplating a cab light setup. I know it's a 1500 truck. If I wanted cab lights, I should have went HD. Well, I didn't go HD. It's my truck, so I'm gonna do what I want to it. I love cab lights. 
I love them. And at first I was like, ah, this truck's too small to look stupid with cab lights, but it's starting to look bigger. It has aggressive stance with the wheels and tires. It has aggressive stance with the, uh, the butt sitting higher than the front again. And it's gonna look really good with towing mirrors. So maybe after the towing mirrors, I may invest and get some cab lights. The only thing I don't like about putting cab lights in is cutting into my roof of the truck. I don't wanna have, you know, the roof leaking and things like that, but we'll get to it at that point. And then other than that, I really don't have a whole lot of exterior things I wanna do um, on my dime. Now, if this channel does really well, like, I do kinda like the Escalade door handles that light up and stuff like that. But like, I'm not a big fan of aftermarket lights, blacked out lights, that's really not me. I want a really clean and simple look. I don't like rock lights really, and I'm really not into light bars or any of the other exterior things. It starts to look really tacky, in my opinion. But that's the thing, once you start getting into stuff and you put something on, then your brain's like, oh, I could do this now too, and I can do this now too. Um, but right now, that's probably about it for the first stage of the build. Once again, if the channel starts doing really well, I might go bigger with the lift, I might go bigger with the wheels and tires, who knows, but uh, for right now, that's you know that's kind of what i'm thinking i do think it'd be really cool though to throw in some kind of accent color maybe when all the uh when all the chrome is gone you know when the bumpers are white i'll probably get rid of the silverado emblems on the side and i still have all this chrome here like the lug nuts and then around the wheel i might do like some kind of accent color like a uh like an orange or a blue or some kind of green that like you know i'll change up that all right now performance there's a lot of room underneath this hood to do stuff now the first thing i'm going to do probably sooner than later is a cooled air intake i really want a cooled air intake on the truck improve some throttle response see what it does to fuel mileage hear that grunt and then after the cooled air intake i'm probably going to do some kind of exhaust setup at that point i don't know if i'm going to go cat back you no know, full headers back i just don't know I'm still contemplating a lot of stuff because these trucks have that AFM mode that- Hey, it's me, real quick. I realize in this next clip you're about to see that I'm talking about the AFM mode and I call it automatic fuel management. And I don't know why I was saying that. It's active fuel management and I know that. Um, but I still said automatic. I think this humidity has really gotten to my head. So, okay, back to the video, thanks. <laughs> uh, automatic fuel management mode. Uh, you know, the V4, V8 mode. So if I do exhaust, I'm gonna have to get rid of that because if you keep the AFM mode and put a full exhaust on, uh, there's still that little flapper there going into V4 mode, making your truck sound like a Honda Civic. And it sounds like a helicopter and it's like really loud and droney. And so like, once I start doing performer stuff, I'll probably get rid of that so that my V8 truck stays a V8 truck. And then I'll probably get some kind of tune at that point and upgrade a couple stuff. If I have that accent color, I might incorporate the accent color underneath the engine bay. And then uh, once again, if the channel starts doing really well, I might go a little hard. I might get a turbo kit built for this. Uh, we might go with like a Whipple supercharger or we might kind of go old school classic American and uh, just kind of cam it. I think, I think these trucks cam sound amazing. So. We'll see what happens as the channel grows and as my bank account tries to grow as well. And then like interior wise, I don't have a lot of complaints with the interior. The only thing I might do with the interior is throw like the Bose sound system in because this truck did not come with the Bose. I like the Bose. I bet you I could find one of these fully loaded with the Bose wrecked somewhere that I could probably steal from. Not steal from, I'd buy it obviously. But I could probably get the Bose sound system out of it. And then also, I wouldn't mind maybe doing the full console modification because this is not the full console. Most of these trucks come with the full console that connect up here. And I wouldn't mind doing that as well because I like the full console with a lot of storage and stuff there. That all being said, I'm sorry if I'm not completely in focus or anything. Once again, I'm filming on the GoPro. I don't even have a screen, so I have no clue if I'm even in the frame. But Thank you for you know bearing with me. I'm using the best tools that I have at the moment. That's all I have for you guys today. Leave a comment, you know, let me know what you would like to see done to this truck because I'm sure there's a lot of things that I haven't thought of that you guys have thought of. Yeah, let me know what you would like to see done in the truck. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Please like this video for me and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Join the build and uh, I will see you guys next week.